Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, grannies, grandpas, babies of the world. I'm your host today, Silent Senior Zero Nine, and this is Let's Play The Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past. Last time we left off, we picked up a butt ton of stuff: a couple heart pieces, Book of Medora. We gained access to the desert ruins. Today, we're going to actually enter the desert ruins uh, dungeon here. So let's get to it. Hey, Aaron, and immediately we're greeted with a bunch of levers here, so if we, uh, spin attack, that'll get rid of all those guys. We don't really get anything for doing that, and also this is a big room, like, look at this. Holy crap. There's, like, a whole lot of nothing right here in the first bit. Also, be careful, because this guy here... Hey! I was totally behind the column. What's wrong with you? Jeez. Alright, so let's get rid of these levers here. I'm surprised I actually know what they, those enemies are called since they're like kind of not really memorable. I mean, you don't see them, but maybe in this dungeon as far as I know. Ooh. Yeah, let's get rid of that nasty sinkhole monster. Yuckers. Also, I don't know why there's different colored enemies here. Ew. I don't know. Yeah, I think they, they take the same amount of hits that the green levers do, so I'm not sure what the deal with that is. I think they're just rainbow colored in here. Well, not really rainbow color, because then it would be multiple colors there. Also, I think if you go to the bottom right, let me see here. Yeah, because at least, even though we don't have the map, we can still see where we've been. But yeah, if you wanted to go here, you can actually exit and leave. And that's how you would leave the dungeon, since you once you um, enter the dungeon, those statues actually go back to where they were, and then they block you in, essentially. But, I'm not here to do that, I'm here to complete a dungeon, so we're gonna do that. Also, I'm really about to max out on my rupees, holy crap. I'm kind of... Part of me is kind of regretting picking up that 500 rupee, or the 300 rupee reward you get for talking to that bandit. But part of me is also like, hey, you know, no shame in flaunting your, your richness, like seriously, you got the money. You know, save it. <laughs> seriously, just save it. Don't, don't just flaunt it or burn it, you know. Actually, don't actually burn the money, because it's actually against the law, apparently. At least if you're in the U.S., it's against the law to burn that, because it's... Basically, what it does is it costs the government money to put it back into circulation. I actually looked that up one day, because I was reading some random articles, and then somebody said, Hey, don't burn your money, and I'm like, why? And I happened to look at that, I was like, oh, that's why. Okay, interesting. Things you learn when you read random facts. Who'd have thunk it? Speaking of reading, I actually need to read some more. I need to actually make use of it. I recently actually opened up my, or got myself my very own library card, which I know sounds weird to some of y'all since I'm 29 years old, and it's like, Jesus, dude, didn't you get a library card when you were in middle or high school or anything like that? And I'm like, well, I mean, I had the student ID, which acted as a library card, but I guess that doesn't necessarily count as like, you know, like a public library. Um, past that, I've always relied on like others to have a library card. Also, for open, or for pushing that switch and opening this chest, we get the map. And I don't know for certain if lighting these torches does anything. It doesn't. Well, that's kind of saddening. Because whenever you light torches, you're always wanting that extra goodie. It's kind of like that one room in Dragon Roost Cavern. Where you light the torches and then you get a chest. I think it's like the very first room actually, or maybe it's a, it's like the umpteenth room. Anyway, Future Self probably has like a clip of it playing somewhere and he's like, Oh, thanks dude, now I have to actually do it because you mentioned it. You have like specifically threw it into perspective there, what you were talking about. Now I have to go dig in for it. Anyway, for charging into that, as you can see they're making us use all kinds of stuff. We get a key. Eric, it is I, Saharasala. You must never fail to find all the treasures in each dungeon. Ow! And always watch your back when it comes to these guys, because these guys are pretty brutal. And there's no way you can actually fight them either, unfortunately. There's no way to destroy them or anything, which sucks, because it's like, dang. The Beemos, we used to be able to blast the bombs, but now it's like, nah. Not today! Not today! Also, if you think I got it right, let's see here what we got. We got a door to the left. And a door to the right. We actually want to go to the door to the right, because I think that's where we're going to find the big key, or it may actually be something else. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and take time to pick it up. It may actually just be the compass, which 
for those speed rodness, or we're like, nope, that's a waste of time, I'm not going this way. But for me, I'm like, yeah, I do actually want to go this way. Let's uh, see here. Compass, yep, okay. That's good. Always good to pick that up. Destroy all the enemies, and I think that, yep, that should open that up, and I just maxed up my rupees. Very nice. Also, if you char, actually, uh, probably not a good idea to do that. Just kind of take this slow and steady wins. Oh, well, I was going to say it's slow and steady wins the race, but not apparently this case. For doing this, we get the big key. Okay, so you do actually want to gun this way. Regardless of what your feelings about this room are, you do have to actually come through here. Come through here to pick up the big key. Oh, man. I don't know how I'm going to go through work today, actually. <laughs> Been up since 4 o'clock this morning. Although, to be fair, I did get about six hours of sleep, so, I mean, I'm not going to be totally without. But I just hope nobody tries my patience today, because I don't know if I'm going to necessarily have it. I might actually bite their head off. No, seriously, I might actually just engulf their head and nom it, and then vor it. And then look at the person behind him like, So, you feel like talking back? <laughs> no, actually, I won't. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a professional. Ugh. But seriously, I, just, I hope today's an easy day. It probably won't be because it's getting closer to the end of the month and it usually is busy. I don't know what I'm talking about work. Why am I talking about work? I always do that. It's a terrible pattern, Silent Senior. Stop it. Ew. Just put that dirty habit to rest. Man? I want a reward for doing that. Ugh. Well, anyway, for coming in here and opening this up, you get the power glove. You can feel strength in both hands. You can pick up and carry stones now. So that may not seem like a humongous deal, but it is actually a pretty big deal considering we now have a lot of different areas. We have access to a lot of different areas that we didn't have access to before, and also we'll be able to actually progress in the dungeon because you do. It actually, to finish this dungeon, you do need that item. It's not so much to fight the boss per se, but it is definitely useful to have it to be able to actually access the boss. And even if you're like one of those that's like, I don't feel like fighting the boss now, I'll fight him later, you can. Also, I got a fart. <sighs> that's better. Oh, jeez, but you're gonna continue? Good leaf. Anyway, I'm gonna come up here and uh, get this guy shoot against the wall. Come up here and push this block down. This block down, there we go, it's one of those blocks. You can actually gain access to this room up here and it's some fairies. Yeah, this room kind of... Admittedly, this room kind of stumped me when I was first playing this game. Way back when. Like, back... I and mean, I'm talking, like, back when I played the this on the Legend, on the Game Boy Advance cartridge, when they had, like, the Four Swords port to it. I, w I kept lighting the torches and couldn't figure out why it wasn't doing anything, because, like, you know, I played other Zelda games, like Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, all that, and it's like, oh, you light torches and things happen. It's like, nope, not in this room. This game was definitely pretty notorious for adding stuff that you didn't need to do, but... Oh, one thing I definitely want to do is pick up this heart piece, though. I think that's our seventh one. Yeah, I was adding things you didn't need to do into the game, and uh, it was also putting in plain sight what you actually need to do, and it's like, well, dang. Don't I just feel like the biggest dum-dum? Alright, so this is the part where you actually need the <clears throat> Dungeon of the Atom or Temple of the Atom, because we will not be able to gain access to more of the dungeon, which is kind of cool, actually. Again, this is kind of drawing another parallel to Dragon Roost Island, you know? Where you have, like, half part of the dungeon outside, part of the dungeon inside. I guess, to be fair, a similar dungeon like that is actually, um... The, what's it called? The, uh... Ice Ruins, or whatever it's called, and Twilight Princess. Ah, oh, jeez, Future Self is going to just have a heyday with me, I can tell. Anyway, <clears throat> that dungeon actually has, like, portions for your outside and inside. It's kind of cool. Anyway, so these are floor tile. They're a, a, a very obnoxious enemy. You can defeat them by cutting each tile with your sword, or just run around the room and avoid getting hit. My recommendation, if you can, is just to kind of hang out in the doorway. I know that's cheap, but these guys are annoying to deal with, let's be honest. Although, really, the main reason he came in here is just to lift the bottom left jar and you'll get a key for that. <clears throat> Excuse me, goodness. So up to floor two, and if we check our map here... Oh my gosh, throat! Go away. 
Yeah, so we basically, we explored all of the basement floor, or below floor one, and then floor one was kind of like, yeah, nothing really there, but now we're into the final half, or the second half of the dungeon, which is floor two. So, oh, let's go ahead and make our way like we're going to the boss. I imagine we're going to have to fight all the tentacle monsters here. Tentacle hentai, I should say, excuse me. Yes, if you can tell, this is the same session, uh, so I haven't actually taken time to do my research to correct myself that I need, which I really desperately need to do. Go ahead and get myself some rupees. Also, I don't think there's anything of value for, <clears throat> excuse me, lighting this, these torches here, but eh, I see a torch, I want to light it. That's just second nature to me. Also, I'm getting my butt kicked here. Holy crap. Jeez. Oh, wow, you didn't even like, get anything for that. Alright, which one is it, then? I was gonna say, there's gotta be a key in here somewhere. It's under one of the jars, of course. Right between two dummies, two laser dumb heads. Yeah, I'm just gonna hang out here and <clears throat> cheerily let you guys deplete your energy of trying to hit me. Could go in there and get the key from one of the jars. I just don't know which one it is, and I don't feel like dying right now. So I think I'll just chill out here. If that's okay with y'all. <laughs> Dang, I can't believe I'm down to two hearts though. Jeez, this dungeon's kicking my butt more than I thought it would. Truth be told, I was thinking I'd be able to blast through this because there's really not too much to it. Like the first one, the first dungeon's actually a lot longer. But I guess this one can be kind of tough because of how easy it is to die to the due to the lasers, the floor tiles, and all that crap. All right, so onward, and then in here, let's see. Yep, we got one more door here, and you, you'll notice. Well, first things first, let's get rid of this guy here. This guy here is gonna be a pain in my butt. Come on, dude, wake up. Ugh. Oh, dude, you can't just go to sleep on me. What the heck? Freaking falling asleep with your Snorlax over here. Get off my screen, you dum dum. Jeez. Anyway, like I was about to say, you'll notice, hmm, this is kind of a short hallway, but if you look at the map, it's like, well, isn't this a longer hallway? Jeez. Well, just as it so happens, the entire time you kept lighting those torches, if you were lighting those torches, you're thinking, man, there's no point in lighting these things. But in this room, that's what you absolutely have to do, actually. And this freaking violent, cool, like, extension of the room happens. Hey, alright. Also, sounds like it's, like, lightly raining outside. That's kind of cool. So, with the big key in tow, we're going to open up this door and we're going to be able to fight a boss. Also, I'm going to go ahead and bring out the ice rod. I think everybody just about does this, but... This is actually the first time I've tried doing this with the ice rod. It's a little tough, honestly, because these guys... The enemies are in the dirt, and they kind of come out at a weird, like, time there. But I know that if you time it just right... Dang it. I know there's a way to do this. The problem is, is the... Oh, there we go, there we go. Okay, I got one of them. That's good. Alright, so let's see if we can't do that again. Welp. I'm just doing all kinds of amazing skills here, jeez. Hey, alright, two shots with that. I'll take that. Yeah, so that's why Sarasala was like so adamant about picking this up. If you use the axe rod, you actually take these guys down in a couple shots. Kind of nice. Ooh, damage to him? I'll take that. Oh, and we're out of magic. Alright, so there's not really anything else I can do here, so we're just gonna go ahead and spin attack these guys. You can kind of honestly, for a strategy, kind of hang out by their hole. And then you'll be able to damage them with a spin attack. I would definitely recommend spin attack. And their main like attack pattern is when they come out of the hole, they shoot four different directions, the four corners. Except when you get down to the last enemy. The last enemy shoots in eight directions, so you kinda have to kinda hang out in the diagonal approach. Just to avoid getting hit if you're like one of those who's trying to do a hit, no hit run. But with that, you defeat him. Get a heart container. And... You got the pendant! Yeah, yeah. You won the pendant of power. Oh. Well, my bad. I thought this was the pendant of wisdom, but it's the pendant of power. 
Oops. Your goal of finding three pendants is in sight. Go for the last one. Woohoo! Yeah! All right, so for doing that, we now have the ability to pick up rocks. We are stronger than ever, and we're ready to do some more exploring in the map. Next time we meet ladies and gentlemen and girls, we're actually going to do some... Oh! Combing of Hyrule, because there's some stuff we can pick up with the ability to lift up rocks now. We're going to pay a visit especially to the upper right portion of the map where Lake Hylia is, or rather, where the Zora River is. Because there's an item we got to pick up there, there's a couple of things we can also do while we're up there, or a few things I should say. And then we're also going to want to go ahead and pay a visit once again down to the South Lake Hylia area again, but more on that later when we get there. Um, and then after that, I guess we'll make our way to Death Mountain after that, so. Until next time, thank you for watching, love you bunches, please don't so slip, and I'll see you then.